Oh, hi, friends. Look at the blue sky. The sun came out. Ugh. I'm such a house plant. I'm so much happier when the sun comes out. I'm walking down 45th Street. There's trailer trucks everywhere down the block, which means they're filming something always over here someplace, either either in an apartment building or up on the corner or they're, something's getting ready to film always over here. So anyways, good for them. I'm not in it. Uh, what can I tell you? Just left Hamilton, did my ironing, my simple ironing. I have the evening off from a theater, which doesn't mean I have the night off. I have home projects. My friends, my friend Jeffrey, I was making costumes for little dolls for him, his sculptures. I have got three of them sitting there, four of them. One's down, one's done. I got to finish these other ones. So tonight's the night of just like, all right, I left there. I'm going right to the gym for a little bit. And then I'm going right home and we're going to work on those dolls. Damn it. But I thought of a story. Now that I've been back at the Lunt doing Tina. I'm thinking of so many stories from when I was there at Beauty and the Beast for such a long time. Oh my God, this is crazy. Now, uh, it is back to a period where uh, the community is collecting money for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. And as we've discussed, we're not doing the annual Easter Bonnet competition this year, but we are still collecting. Now, th at this point, the cast isn't used to always be, the cast will go out into the auditorium at the end of the show and collect for the cause, sometimes sell merchandise, sell posters, sell whatever the show wants to sell for, for, to raise money, curtain speeches, whatever you want to do. But at this point, it's just one of your principal characters giving the curtain speech and then volunteers from Broadway Cares itself are doing the collecting. So anyways, I was thinking about years and years ago at Beauty and the Beast, we used to sell replicas of Bell's Locket. Uh, it was a cheap piece of jewelry, so it was easy to find a bulk version of this little heart-shaped locket and sell it for 10 bucks. We used to sell Belle's locket. Oh wait, he's cute. He's super cute. Hey, turn around. Hey! <laughs> Anyways, I'm distracted. It's springtime. Uh, Belle's locket. So one of my friends was out in the house. <laughs> Bryn O'Malley. Oh, I love that woman. She's crazy. She's out in the house selling Belle's locket. And there's a little girl, she has to be like 10 years old, and you can tell she's got $10 to spend in New York City. And she's agonizing, buy the locket, don't buy the locket. She's, oh, she's torn, what to do, what to do. Her mother looks at her and says, it's for AIDS, Anna. So the little girl's like, I'll take the locket. And Bryn was like, it's free, it's free. You could just have it, it's free. And she came backstage to us traumatized. Like, you're not gonna believe what this mother just said to her child. It's for AIDS, Anna. So that became the thing. Whenever, cause when you're doing the collecting, you need members of the company to volunteer to be the ones to go out in the house to do the selling at the back of the house, up in the mezzanine, over in the side mezzanine, you need a few volunteers a night. And whenever people wouldn't be volunteering, we would always say to them, it's for AIDS, Anna. And then during the curtain speech, the cast is not required to stay on the stage after they have bowed for the curtain speech. Most people do, but honestly, if you have a train to catch, you can book off the stage. So there would be nights, people would come booking off the stage during the speech saying, not tonight, Anna, while well, they're taking their costumes off. So it's for AIDS, Anna, and <laughs> not tonight, Anna, is the thing that I was reminded of now that we're collecting for Broadway Cares again. Anyway, there's a happy story for a Friday. Oh, I do tickle myself. All right, bye.